about that old uh, Kimball truck in there? You got a radio on in there? Yes, sir. Go ahead. How are you? And uh, who am I talking to today there? Oh, we're doing very good. We just left the 75 Chrome Shop show. Uh, my name is Adam Kimball. 10 4. Well, that's a pretty good looking truck you got there. Uh, I'd love to know a little bit more about it. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, tell me the, the year, make, model, all the good stuff that uh, somebody want to hear about. It's a 1990 My dad ordered it new. It's got a uh, four and a quarter B model. 8LL transmission. Uh, 46,000 pound rears with 433 gears back there. 10 4, and what do you do with it? What do you find, uh, what do you do the most of? Uh, I know I said it depends on the day, but what do you find you're all in most? Yeah, the majority of the time we stay hooked to, like I said, we got about 12 different trailers. Majority of the time we'll stay hooked to Conestogas. Uh, like I said, either hauling machinery or hauling medical equipment. How long have you been trucking for? Uh, got started out of high school uh, back in 98 and uh, been going at it ever since. Now, I'm sure when you started you weren't driving something as flashy as this. What did you find yourself starting in? Uh, actually, my dad, like I said, had ordered this in 90. Uh, first time I ever drove, I was 10. I was driving this truck across the desert. Uh, we just kind of swapped seats and I drove for about 30 minutes. I guess when he figured my hands were sweaty enough, I needed to get out of the passenger seat because I was so nervous. He get out of the driver's seat, excuse me. He put me over, back over in the passenger seat. And when I got out of high school, I bought this truck from him. And uh, it was pretty done up. It was black and purple at the time. And, uh, back then it had fiberglass fenders and things like that on it, so this, this was what I was in. Well, I'll tell you what, that's uh, one heck of a story to, to uh, get in a seat at the age of 10. That was a whole different time, a whole different era. And I'm sure uh, you probably learned a whole lot from uh, from the old man there, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Learned just about everything I know from him. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure the military wouldn't have been too thrilled with me driving some of their equipment across the desert at 10 years old, but it is what it is. Well, that's a good looking truck, and I'm glad uh, you brought it out there to uh, the uh, 75 Chrome shop. You tell me, what did uh, people enjoy about your truck there? Fill me in on the paint. This one actually started life. Uh, he had ordered it and it was all black, uh, black sable metallic. Uh, when I got in it, I added some purple to it back in 98. Uh, the color it is now is actually a foreign color. It's supposed to be mint green, but I don't know if something went wrong in the mixing or what, but mint green to me is a little bit darker, so we refer to it as sea foam green. 
Well, that's nice. Yes, sir. It came out pretty good. Definitely grabbed your attention and apologize a lot. Well, it sure did. It grabbed my attention. I figured I'd want to come over and uh, get a good look at it and look at some detail work, which I got to do there and uh, convince you to come out here on the old uh, 75 and look at it at speed. It looks pretty good going down the road. Yeah, it doesn't go very fast with the gears it's got in it, so it uh, definitely gives you a chance to get a look at it when it's creeping down the highway. I'm going to get your opinion. I'm going to get uh, your suggestions. Uh, what advice would you give to a guy that is a year in and uh, you want to give him some tips in order for him to improve his uh, his driving career and uh, make the best go at it. What would you say to a guy like that? Uh, the best advice I could give to somebody that's been doing it for a year would probably be to you know, try the best to get hooked up with somebody that's been driving for a while and then just come out of school two weeks before they did. Uh, get hooked up with somebody that that knows some of the ways that things used to be, a little more of uh, the old school etiquette out here on the highway, and uh, you know, try getting hooked up with a good company. I know it's hard with you know, only maybe having a year's worth of experience to do that, but if you could get hooked up with a good company that, that cares about their image, takes pride in their equipment, uh, maybe run local or regional, uh, and if getting out here on the, on the highway and running the country is what you want to do, work into that, but just having somebody there to ask questions that's been doing it for a while, and uh, I think that would be the best advice I could give to somebody. She's sounding pretty good. Yeah, she juiced up a little bit. We got uh, her own nozzles and a bigger turbo. She's put down about 600. That's not a bad deal at all. Uh, did I, I don't think I asked you what part of the country you run the most. Uh, so where do you find yourself hauling at? Yeah, the majority of the time we're just running locally around Atlanta. Uh, most of our rigged jobs are uh, our equipment is either coming out of Atlanta or going in. Uh, we we'll, we'll receive machinery into our warehouse. Then we'll do installs locally around town, or vice versa, taking it out locally and bringing it back to our warehouse, and then it'll ship out from there. Uh, we do have halls that go, you know, longer. We've got a couple jobs that work in Oklahoma. Uh, we're getting ready to, in two weeks, we'll be heading down to Seattle. So we, uh, we do get to get out, but the majority of it, you will see, is just running around 285. Now, working around the Atlanta area, what would uh, you want to say to a motorist that that's uh, in and around your truck and trailer, and, uh, and you want to give them a little advice, a little tip to stay safe uh, for themselves. What would you say to them? I guess I'd like to have, if I could wish for two things people would do a little more often, and that's, uh, you know, we're downtown, for instance, and you're turning onto a two lane road uh, right in the heart of the city, you know, one, one lane of traffic going each direction. You know, we swing out two or three lanes to make a turn. It sure would be nice if people weren't diving on your right side trying to turn inside of you. And then other than that, I guess the, you know, it just seems that I guess it's just everywhere you go in general. And everybody seems to be in a hurry to get nowhere anymore. You know, if everybody just take a breath and slow down a little bit and maybe put their phone down, there'd probably be half the accidents on the highway than what we currently have. Yeah, and that's true. It's so uh, it's so tempting nowadays because social media is a part of everyone's life, and you know you don't want to miss anything, or you get a notification, or you got to check an email, or you got to check your directions and everything else. Uh, but before you know it, you're up on a big big truck, and you know nobody knows anything about what's going on in a big truck. But you guys are out there trying to navigate around other little cars and whatnot. Now, will we be seeing this uh, truck at more truck shows in the future? Yeah, I'd like to get it out a little more. I, uh, I hate taking the time off just to go to a truck show when I could be using that time to spend time with my family, my wife and the two kids. But, uh, hey, yeah, you'll, you'll probably be seeing it out a little bit more. 
I'm going to go ahead and jump off on this next exit. Uh, Adam, it's been a pleasure talking to you. We'll keep looking at you here until this exit here will peel off, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon. All right, sounds good, Chris. I appreciate it. It was uh, good meeting you and speaking to you. Appreciate the opportunity. You have a good ride going back south. 10-4. Be safe, Chris. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. 10-4, man. I'll see you soon.